Welcome to Fishing Britain. Last week, I showed you the trout's reaction to flies with additives in. And boy, hasn't that caused a stir, with hundreds of people commenting on all sorts of forums. Why don't you tell us what you think by posting a comment on our Facebook page. Now today, I'm at Lenches Lakes near Evesham to take on the Vineyard 120 challenge, even with this hurricane. We've also got the old favourite, Fishing Britain News and Hooked on YouTube. But first, let's get into the dry and show you the highlights of last weekend's fly fair. Welcome to the BFFI. Now this weekend is an important date in every fly tyres calendar. The British Fly Fair attracts fly tyres from around the globe and they are demonstrating some extraordinary skills and flies that have to be seen to be believed. Some of them so realistic you expect them to fly off the vice, sorry. There's also an array of stalls where you can kit yourself out for all your fly tying needs. Some of it you don't even know that you do need. So come on, let's go and have a look what's going on. Right, we're on the Venyard stand with some fantastic fly tyres. Barry Odd Clark, Ian McKenzie and David from Bug Bond. So I've thrown a challenge to two of them, that's David and Barry, to tie a fly as quickly as possible. There's the materials, boys. You choose what you want and the challenge will begin. Right, are you two ready? Yes. Three, two, one, off you go. This is where you see all the shapes. Reminds me of Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Too much aqua bit last night, I tell you, man. It is gone, guys. So you do practice. <laughs> do you know what this looks like? Absolutely bloody awful. Then. <laughs> uh, it's just a hatching caddis that has a little shuck hanging at the back. It's a great fly for both brown trout and uh, uh, grayling. Works a treat and floats, uh, floats very well. A caddis bomb with a tungsten bead, a size 10, a heavy nymph hook. Well done to Barry Ord Clark. Great speed tying there. And if you wanted to become a top fly tire, where would you start? Well, there's always the Fly Dressers Guild with branches all over the UK. We catch up with General Secretary Chris Reeves to tell us more about it. Uh, we have 1,500 individual members. About half of those are in clubs up and down the country, 41 branches at the moment. Three new branches this year alone. We, just, we come to shows like this, we have the have-a-go tables, we've got demonstrations going on of techniques and problem solving. We did long leads back in June and did over 90 people tied their first fly in two days. Brilliant. Uh, the way it's going here, we may, we may double that. This is Philippa Hake, who started only six months ago and is already truly hooked, regularly posting her creations on Twitter. So what got her into fly tying? 
this guy right here. It's all my fault. It's all, it's all Howard's fault. <laughs> it's great seeing young people get involved and we need a lot more of them to do so. Well done, Thank your you. first woolly Thank burger. You. And if you want to see it closer, remember the name on Twitter, Philippa underscore Hake. If you really love fly tying, why not tie every fly from a 19th century book by Francis Francis, entitled A Book on Angling, which lists over 600 flies. Kat Rowling from the US is doing precisely that, and she's tying them all in hand with authentic materials. She tells us that she always ties two of each pattern, and she's been doing it for over two years, and now is only past the 100 fly. If history isn't your thing, then how about realistic? This crazy Dutchman has an eye for detail. Well, I told you, you would see some creations today. And I mentioned that some of them are so lifelike that you expect them to fly off. Well, this one, I'd expect to hop off. But have a look at this. This is a work of art. I mean, it's a fly catching a fly. But right in the bottom, you will see I just all tied on a fishing hook. Would I fish with it? No. But I would put it on the mantelpiece. <laughs> that will take me close to 40, 50 hours down the road, no problem. That's just fly tying for the fun of fly tying. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't have anything to do with fishing anymore. Although it's very sort of educational because you actually learn to, you know, about proportions and what you're imitating. Yeah. Because there's a good number of fly fishes and fly tires that are tying flies because someone else tells them this and that is a good pattern. Okay. They pretty much do whatever they're told and they don't even know what they're imitating. Not all of them, yeah. but... And once you get into this stuff, you really have to get into that stuff to be able to get a copy as close as you can proportion-wise and color-wise and all that. So you actually learn something from it and it keeps me busy. They do say there's a fine line between genius and lunatic. So if you're gonna just have a go or embark on a historic project of your own, or just simply wish to tie flies to fish with, you're going to need stuff. And the BFFI is full of stuff. And on Funky Fly Tying Stand, Toby tells us what's new for this year. It's a very, very new flash material that's clear but been dyed in loads of different colours. Very, very translucent, very soft, very mobile, can be used for tails, ribbing, wings, uh, little butts to hot butts, that sort of thing, cheeks. Now we've got a range of very hot colours like your pinks, your chartreuses, your oranges, but we're also doing a range of natural colours like olives, carrots, browns, which are perfect for making bodies on nymph flies. Now, these are turkey biots, which are a lot more translucent than goose biots. They're longer and they're easier to use when making your nymph or dry flies. They give a beautiful segmented finish on the fly, or you can reverse them and you get a very flat finish. Comes in a range of about 14 colors. So from your natural colors through to your hot colors like this. Flies need to be tied on hooks, and Partridge have some of the best, including a new range of salmon doubles and one of my favourites, the new jig hook. Check out how to use them on catching degrailing. And Crystal River have a new range of precision tools out. Available um, in all Crystal River stockists within the next month. So now we have all we need to make flies. Where do we go and fish them? Well, how about wetting a line in the wild rivers and streams of Norway? Uh, Norway, as you know, uh, comes to sport fishing. It's always been uh, salmon or sea fishing. The uh, inland fishing, trout and grayling, char, uh, pike, has been a bit of a forgotten area. And this is what we've uh, uh, taken uh, upon us to, to market and, and, and inform people about. We have wild fish only. Yeah. And we have big fish. The scenery is absolutely fantastic. It's a, it's a great scenery. You can fish 24 hours if you want to. <laughs> you, you'll have to uh, strengthen your arm for that. The sheer level of skills on show here today is top notch. And here is something a little different. The fly fair is not only about tying flies and buying materials. 
Uh, it's all manner of stands, and one that's really caught my eye is rodcraftsman.com. Very bespoke service. Now, just look at the artwork on this, and also what they'll do, they'll customise every handle that you have on your rod to suit you. Right, what are you tying? A raised red. Okay. What's you don't that? know what that is. No, I don't. Because it's my pattern. Okay, well, let's, let's tie it then. These shows are all about bumping into and catching up with some old friends. And I catch up with Wendy of Wendy's Flies, who I've known for over 35 years and is like a second mum to me. But now she teaches the teachers how to teach. Thank you. That's mine. All right. Right. Casting for Recovery is a wonderful charity, proving fishing is not only good just for the soul. The basic premise is that we take ladies away who still have or have had breast cancer. We introduce them to fly fishing over a two and a half day period. Um, the ladies come along, um, most of which have never had any experience of fly fishing. Um, we have qualified instructors there, as well as we have a good medical team as well. So over that two and a half day period, they learn all about how to put the rod together, um, how to actually cast, how to potentially catch a fish, we hope. They get meditation, counselling, and it's all totally free of charge. Well, that's it, folks. End of the day. I've had a great day meeting old friends, making new ones. I've got a bunch of kit here. I'm off home before it starts raining to tie some flies. See you on the water. Well, the show was fantastic. And if you missed this year's, well, put this date in your diary now. 7th and 8th of February, 2015. Now it's over to David, another man outstanding in his field. This is Fishing Britain News. The British government has at last given the go-ahead to a new cormorant and goosander management plan. The Angling Trust has been campaigning for more than three years for a change to the current bureaucratic and ineffective licensing regime that governs the lethal control of these birds. They can eat between one and two pounds of fish every day, and that means they're responsible for more than a thousand tonnes of fish every winter. The measures will include an extension of the control season and an increase from the national limit of cormorant control from 2,000 to 3,000. Cricketing legend Sir Ian Botham is among dignitaries opening Scottish rivers to mark the beginning of the salmon fishing season. Sir Ian, a keen angler, was guest of honour at the event and was piped to the River Teeth to perform the opening ceremony. Shark attacks seem to be rife in Australia at the moment, with a spear fisherman losing his life. This new video shows spear fishermen getting more excitement than they bargained for when a tiger shark begins to stalk them on one of their dives. They're fishing in the Coral Sea of Australia. Listen out for the high-pitched scream in the middle of the video. Oh, there it is. They escaped unscathed. These fishermen are having trouble with a fish above water. They abandoned ship after a sailfish leapt onto the boat with them off Costa Rica. The remaining crew dealt with the agitated sailfish, safely releasing it back into the water. And finally, competitors in the Winter Olympics in Sochi were surprised to see this sign on their loo door. It asks them to avoid a number of activities, including fishing. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the story. Thank you, David. This weather is getting much, much worse, and I've got the 120 challenge coming up. But first, it's over to Charlie with Hooked on YouTube. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. Carl and Alex are on holiday. That's why Carl and Alex Fishing comes to you this week from Madeira. Still, don't talk to us about trying to film fishing films in British floods. It's carp men on tour. Carp fishing at the Hungarian world record lake Euro Aqua in 2013 features three carp over £70, topped by Ed Matthews with an £80 plus mirror. Going back even further is the surprisingly named Be Here Just For A Moment by 
by Julian Jurkovic, it shows summer fishing in the south of France. This goes back to last November. Fishing at sea, the cod championships has Dave Barham joining a big cod competition and heads out to the famous Needles for some of his own autumn cod sport. Spearfishing down under next and 2014 NZ Spearfishing Nationals Bay of Islands is a compilation of footage shot for New Zealand TV station 3 News. Now let's go to North America in the here and now. Ice fishing for pike shows six fat pike caught in a water called Beaver Dam. Not much more to say than that, but if you like ice fishing, you will love it. In catfish heaven there in the Santee Cooper Lakes in South Carolina, home to three different species of catfish that have enough food and habitat to grow to world record sizes. Finally, trout fishing in the city is a good idea from State Wildlife and Fishery Agency Arkansas Game and Fish. Each winter, AGFC stocks about 75,000 rainbow trout in 22 locations near urban centres. This video looks behind the scenes to show how a tiny trout egg becomes a source of angling fun for natural state city dwellers. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link please charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv Let me remind you what the 120 challenge is all about. It's where I turn up to a fishery with all my fishing kit except for the flies because I have to sit down and tie them before going out on the water. Now our friends at Vineyard have added a little bit of a twist. They're going to supply all the materials. That's all I can bring is just my fly tying kit. So I'm allowed and I've been allowed to put the tools and the vise together, get ready before the timer starts. So just get my scissors. Right, we've got a countdown clock on my phone. The vice is ready. Now when Aaron hands me the envelope, I'm gonna press this start button. The mystery envelope. Thank you, started right. Now the problem with this, I haven't got a clue. You probably won't believe it, but I don't know what's in there. Today, it's a horrible day. So let's first of all have a look. Just dump them all out. Let's have a look at what we've got. Bit of twinkle. That's good. All right, first of all, we got some hooks. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Right, it's a streamer hook. That's a size six. That's quite big. We've got grub and heavy wet fly size 10. Right, we've got a bit of marabou. We've got mallard. Okay, thank you. <laughs> we got gummy minnows. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll see if we use them. Right. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, that. 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 Right. I have noticed. In the last challenge, I used some gold heads and lead heads, and uh, there's nothing. There's no weight whatsoever. So you have to improvise. Luckily, I'm allowed to use loads of different lines. So. First of all, we've got a selection of marabou. So look, right, still waters, olive, you've got to have it. Gonna use size 10 hook. The first fly I had to tie, and it, it's a sort of a stalwart of any still water, is the damsel fly. But at this time of year, you really should be using a, a gold head, but there was none in the kit, so I wasn't allowed to. So, marabou tail. I'd make it as fluffy as possible. Uh, I would have liked pearly twinkle, but again, none in the kit. So I just use the crystal flash floor orange in the tail. And orange and green, yeah, they go all right together sometimes. Then for the body, there was no body material apart from, again, using the same colored marabou. So I spun that onto the hook. And lastly, just to add something, a little bit of attraction in the head, I decided to just use five or six turns of the gold holographic. That way there's a bit of flash in there, even though there isn't a gold head. The next thing I wanted to tie was a cat's whisker. So I had the white for the tail. I put the gold holographic in the tail just to put a bit of flash in it. Um, I would have liked to have some bright green, um, some flow green for the body, but there was nothing at all in it. So I decided just to spin some marabou again. So it's, it's a half damsel, half cat mix or metamorphosis of a fly. Then I had to, I could not not use 
this um, gummy minnow kit. And it is actually really, really simple to use. Um, and it really surprised me because I've, I've seen it before in three or four different layers where um, it's more for sea fishing. But this one, very, very simple because everything's done for you. The eyes are on, the petroleum blue is in the back and it's just one fold over the hook. I just put some white marble in the tail just to add a little bit of movement and then just fold it over the hook. I've got to be off my head. This is absolutely crazy. Hurricane winds. And I'm doing all this, and you're sat there at home in the dry. Crazy. It's a great day to be out, isn't it? <laughs> right, let me do a few sort of pointers here for you. I've set myself up with the wind over my left shoulder. Reason is I want it just to keep that line away from you. But occasionally I'm getting some really, really strong gusts coming straight into my face, across, and even into my right shoulder. If you're ever out fishing and it's like this, right? One second, the wind is down, it's quite nice, then suddenly big gusts come up. If you're halfway through a cast and you think it's going to come into you, just drop everything, just leave it on the ground behind you. Because there's nothing worse than trying to save a cast and that fly is going to come into you. Glasses and hat are must. Never, even in horrible conditions like this, use low light, low light glasses, but they're there primarily for protection. A little bit about the retrieve, because <laughs> there's nothing taken at the moment. Um, a lot of people will say, you know, winter, slow, mix it up. But it is very, very cold today, and I'm just finding it a little bit difficult to stay in contact. Oh, nice rain. Stay in contact doing a figure of eight. So what I'll actually do is, I'll do a slow roly-poly, um, really, really slow, same speed as I would do a figure of eight. But it means I can actually stay in contact with the line uh, at all times, whereas when you're fe feeling that your hands are really sort of cold and stiff and you can't do that figure of eight, just do this. Quite simple, quite easy. That was actually a little take. The other thing is being forced. Normally, going out in a small still of water, gold air damsel or um, tungsten bead damsel. The great thing with this, there's no weight at all in the fly. So one, I'm using an intermediate line. So it's the line that's gonna take the fly down. But the other thing is, I can actually fish it a lot slower, but get still a lot of movement in that tail. Because if you just imagine a gold head, it's gonna dive down. So to get that movement, you have to retrieve faster. This way, you can retrieve a lot slower, but still get that pulsating movement in that marabou. And the last piece of advice, if you're going out fishing, if you're thinking of going out on a on a day like this, don't stay at home in front of the fire and tie some flies. I must be crazy. But the challenge is on. Right, damsel's coming off. I've had a few sort of half-hearted sort of bumps with it, but I've never ever... Well, I tell a lie. I fished salt water with a bigger sort of version to this, but uh, never on a trout water. But good thing about this one is, it's got eyes, so I can see if there's any fish there and probably come back and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can see I've lost the plot. It's actually very nice. I've got to say, this fly really, looks really, really good. It's catching the light. And if it was October, November, when the fish were really slamming fry, then I think it would be very, very effective. But you never know. Oh, 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 oh stay on, stay on, stay on. 
Well, you're not going to believe it. First cast. Oh. And I did say that <laughs> October, November for Thry, but this fish doesn't know the months. So he's just nailed that fry fry. Look at it in a corner of his mouth. He has just slammed it. Look at that. <laughs> yes! Challenge complete. The damsel had a few takes. Change to that gummy fry. And look at that. Gorgeous rainbow. And right in the corner of the mouth. And 36, 50 left, job done. <laughs>well folks that's it for another week i hope you've enjoyed it you're not going to believe that it's the same day the rain stopped but the wind hasn't if you enjoyed it don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with all the other programs on the channel go to fieldsportschannel.tv as i get blown away and hit that constant contact form don't forget to like our facebook and follow us on twitter i'll see you next week on fishing britain <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!